Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to another Freedom Moment. It's Sunday, July 19th, 2020. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you and praise you. Father, we thank you for another day and another opportunity to be in your hand. Father, we thank you for providing for us. We thank you, Lord God, for hearing us. We thank you, Lord God, for answering us. We thank you, Lord God, for your forgiveness and your mercy. We come to you and ask you for a cleansing so that we can restore great fellowship with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way during this time of service so that we are refreshed, that we learn more about our relationship with you and walk away ready to serve you better. Father, we thank you once again for all of these things. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Looking for fellowship, prayer, or Bible study? You can get in touch with us at home or on the go. Just go to www.freedomfellowshiprb.org. Or you can catch us on Twitter at Freedom Rockaway. See you there. Scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke. St. Luke, the 14th chapter, will be reading beginning from verse 25. It's up on the screen in the New International Version. Luke chapter 14, beginning at verse 25. Listen to what it says. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. The text for today's message is taken from the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter. We're taking one verse for our text. That's verse 5. Genesis chapter 11 and verse 5. Listen to what it says. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you. We thank you once again. You care so much for us that you want to speak to each one of us individually. That's what we're looking forward to. Our ears are open, Lord God. We're attentive. We're ready to hear from you, Holy Spirit. Speak to us like never before. Cause us to change from the inside out. Cause us to mature so that we have a stronger relationship with our Savior. Send down your anointing, Lord. It makes teaching easy, and it makes understanding even easier. Father, 
We'll give you all the glory and we'll give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Amen. He came down to check out the city and the tower that people were creating. Hey, that's us. It's interesting because we were created, the Bible says, in his image and likeness. The Hebrew said the Demuth and Salem, his image and likeness. And so we are like him in that we are kingdom builders. Amen. That's what we do. We are kingdom builders. Since the fall of man, since the fall of Adam and Eve, all of humanity has been hardwired to go higher, to elevate, to rise above. Amen. That's what we do. So what we do is we create towers. Amen. That's what we do. We create towers. We are builders. We're kingdom builders. And in the process of building, we also build towers. We are some castle building folks. Amen. But then it happens. Then God comes down and inspects what we're building. That's the catch. Yes, we're building. Yes, we're building towers. Yes, we're creating greater and bigger things. And then God comes and inspects them. Need a title for today's message? It's building your tower. Amen. Building your tower. Now, you might ask, why, why do we do that? Why, why do we build towers? Why are we hardwired to do that? Well, there are certain things. There are certain advantages to towers. And so we want to talk about building your tower. Again, keep your idea on, keep your mind on the scripture lesson again. And we're going to zero in on that. So what are the towers for? Why, why would we even do this? And why do we do it inherently? Let's go into the advantages of having a tower. What's it really all about? The tower advantages. First and foremost, it's a watchtower. Amen. You get an opportunity to have a vantage point, an ability to see things from a distance. It gives us an ability to see what's going on around us. Amen. That's a huge vantage point. In the Old Testament, and we were talking about uh, Ezekiel last weekend, and he was the watchman for the, for the house of Israel, and that's what uh, one of the advantages of a tower was. It gave you a great point of view. Again, what does it do? It gives you a view. Praise the Lord. You're at an advantage. You get a chance to see things. From a distance, you can see something coming towards you. You can see something moving away from you. You can see what the other side of the land is doing, depending on how, how tall your tower is. These are just some of the small advantages of having a tower. It's with a view. Another thing about a tower is this. You can see your blessings. Amen. That's what it was really primarily set up to do. Not only just give us a better view of things around us, but also so that we could check out our flocks. Amen. If you had flocks all over the land, you got a chance to see them if you were up in your tower. You got a chance to check out your crops, how things were growing. If, 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 if there was something wrong with the crops, you could see it. If there was a fire that was brewing somewhere on your property, you could see it before it got out of hand. You could check out your blessings. 
Amen. The tower was there so you could survey all of the many blessings of God. Why else do we uh, put up a tower? What's another advantage? Another advantage is you get a chance to see what your enemy's up to. Praise the Lord. He couldn't just sneak up on you. Huh? Because it was a watchtower and you had a view and you were able to see things from a different vantage point, you were able to see your enemy coming. Amen. You could see trouble coming. What a huge advantage. And that's what we do. We need to check out what's going on around us. Listen, if you had a real good tower, there was no need for a palm reader. When you have a tower, you don't have to ask what's going to happen because you could see things happening afar off. Praise the Lord. And listen, saints, today we're doing the same thing. We're still building towers. We're still uh, uh, building uh, things that are giving us an advantage in this life. Remember, we do it inherently. Okay, so maybe you don't have a castle and maybe you don't have a physical tower, but think about the towers that we're building today. Okay? Remember, a tower, that represents where you want to be. That's really what it represents. So that's why we build towers. But listen, how's about the tower of economic status? We're building that tower today. The tower of economic status. How much money you have in a bank? You have a good bankroll? Do you have some savings? How's about the tower of social status that many people build? Come on. You wanted a name for yourself. You want to be in the upper echelon. You want to be in the 1%. How's about the tower of political status? Hey, Amen. You want to be one of the ruling class. We, we do this today. We still build towers. And how's about the, the, the tower of religious status? Hmm? We want everybody to think of us as religious so that we can spiritually manipulate people. Amen. Remember, folks, why do we build towers? Because we are kingdom builders. However, the truth is, God wants us to build his kingdom on this earth. That's what we're here to do. Amen. So let's consider a couple of examples of towers, some biblical examples so we can uh, understand what's going on with our tower building process. Let's get some examples of towers that are in the Bible. Many of them, I'll tell you something, because uh, uh, we get in the way of God's uh, plans Many of our towers actually get in our way and they're worthless. But let's talk about some of the towers in the Bible so we can get an example of how not to build a tower. How's about the first tower mentioned in the Bible? The Tower of Babel. Do you remember that in Genesis chapter 11? That was an interesting tower. It was a monument to our ego. Amen. Is that the kind of tower you're building? Where it involves your pride? Let me say this to you. If you're building a tower of pride, it has no place in your plans to live. Don't be cocky. Amen. The Tower of Babel. They, they said to themselves, let's build ourselves a tower that reaches the heavens. And God came down and confounded their speech. God came down to look at it in Genesis chapter 11. He said, nah, the, the, these people are doing, going about this the wrong way. They're trying to reach heights of heaven in the wrong way. 
Folks, there's only one way to get to heaven. You can't just build a ladder or a big tower to get there. That's what these people were trying to do. They were trying to exalt themselves. Listen, don't be prideful. The Bible says that pride comes before destruction. So God came down and messed up their whole plan of building so that they couldn't build it. Some scholars say the reason why they were building it was because they were still flood-minded. In other words, after the Noadic flood, after the flood of Noah, during Noah's time period, they were afraid, so they wanted to build something that maybe the flood couldn't reach. Again, that was just one commentary. How's about another tower? The Tower of Peniel. Interesting. Judges chapter 8. This is the story of Gideon. Gideon had won a, 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 an incredible uh, battle against countless individuals with only 300 men. And then he was tired. And so he went to the area where the Tower of Peniel was and he asked, can, can you just give us some supplies? And the people scoffed at him and said, get out of here. We're not going to give you anything. And he, he and his men were hungry and tired, and they just needed a little bit of supplies. This is an example of how not to build a tower. The people in the tower told him no. But listen, your tower is not just for your benefit. It's for the benefit of others. Remember, other people are going to benefit. How's about your family? How's about your friends, people around you? All this stuff that you're building, all this life that you're building up, this tower of status that we're all apt to build, does it include guests? Does it include strangers? Does it include others? Gideon came back and tore that tower down. Don't forget, your tower is for the benefit of others too. How's about another tower that's listed in the Bible? One chapter more, and we see the Tower of Shechem. Now, this is an interesting story because Gideon, Gideon has a son, and, and his son is wicked. One of his sons, his name is Abimelech, and Abimelech turns around and asks the people of Shechem to make him their ruler. And the people of Shechem, in Judges chapter 9, Say, sure, you could be our ruler. And then after a while, because he was so corrupt, there was a little bit of a rub between them. They, they had a disagreement between them and Abimelech. So the people of Shechem, in the middle of this disagreement, Abimelech comes back and burns their tower down. Now, what does this represent? And what do we learn from, from the tower of Shechem? Pick the right leader. <laughs> Amen. Be careful of who's influencing you while you're building your tower. Amen. While you're building your tower, be careful of who's influencing you. Shechem allowed Abimelech to influence, and then when they wanted to pull away from that bad influence, Abimelech went and destroyed their tower. Remember, these are towers that, that pose as examples of how not to be. Remember, don't add pride. Remember, your tower is for not just for you, it's for others. Remember, be careful of who you choose to influence you. And then there's another tower that's mentioned in the Bible. Right after Shechem, there's the Tower of Thebes. And this is interesting because the same Abimelech, after he destroys the Tower of Shechem in Judges chapter 9, he moves on to Thebes. And he figures he's just going to brutalize them. So he goes to their tower. And as he's ready to destroy their tower, he's just about to break into their tower. Somebody throws a big heavy stone from the top of the, of, of the tower and busts his skull. <laughs> That's the way he ended. Well, pastor, what's the moral of that story? Don't mess with other people's towers. Amen. Amen. Mind your own tower business. Praise the Lord. 
Stop pointing at everybody else's tower problems and check out your own tower. Praise God. That's what you should be doing. What do we learn from Thebes and Tyre? Tyre is listed in, in Ezekiel. Don't mess with other people's towers. Worry about your own tower. Better yet, don't laugh when you see another person's tower falling. That's what they did in Tyre. Ezekiel said, you want to laugh at other people's towers falling? Wait till you see what happens to yours. Amen. The worst thing you can do is turn around to your enemy and say, good for you. Because God doesn't like that. Remember, vengeance is his, not yours. So these are all examples. And then in the New Testament, there's one more example of a tower. And Jesus gives that in Luke chapter 13. It's the Tower of Siloam. And Jesus says, remember the Tower of Siloam? It fell on all those people and killed them. Well, what's the moral of that story? Time and chance happen to everybody. Better yet, what Jesus was trying to say is while you have time, you have time to change. While you have time, you have time to adjust your tower. Listen to me, saints. Everyone's into building towers. That's what we do. Whether, again, whether politically, socially, religiously, economically, we're all into building a tower. So many of us are building a tower of retirement. I know so many people that were building the tower of retirement and they never got a chance to hang out in that tower. The Tower of Siloam, what's the moral of that? What was Jesus trying to say? Fix your tower while there's time. Check out what's going on with your tower while you have an opportunity. Praise God. You're going to build a tower. It's a given. That's what we do. So let's talk about tower construction. Let's get it all together. How do we do it so that we don't goof up? What do we need to do? How do we have good tower construction? Let's look at the scripture lesson. Let's go back and check out Luke chapter 14 and verse 28. Listen to what Jesus says in 28 through 30. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Amen. So what do we have to do? First thing, tower construction, folks. First thing you have to do is this. Check out your intentions. Listen to what Jesus said. Which one of you intending to build a tower? You need to check your intentions. Pastor, what do you mean? You'll never do anything unless you intend to do it. Come on, you don't mistakenly build a tower. You build it because you've made some plans. What am I trying to say? Make plans. Make plans. You need plans. Somebody once said, the future doesn't get better by hope. It gets better by plan. If you, if you plan on a tower, the tower will come out better. You should have good intentions. Amen. He says, listen, which one of you wants to build a tower? First, let him sit down and then count the cost. Somebody say, sit down. Amen. That's what you have to do. Right where you are, sit down and make plans. Last week, we were talking about making an assessment. This is the time when you make an assessment. If you really want to construct a good, solid tower, you have to have good intentions. The tower comes out right because your intentions and your plans are right on point. And again, don't take the advice and influence of the wrong people when you're building your tower. Tower construction, you're gonna need intentions. What else do you need? You're gonna need sacrifices. Listen to what Jesus said. After you've intended to build, you sit down and you count the cost. Hello, sacrifices, that's the cost. What do you mean, pastor? There's no free 
lunch. My economics teacher used to put it this way. The only time you get something for nothing is when somebody else got nothing for something. Think about it. You have intentions. And then after you have intentions and plans, you make sacrifices. It's the only way. Jesus sacrificed his life for us. Heaven is not free. Freedom is not free. Hallelujah. Intentions, sacrifice, and then what? He says, you have to lay a foundation. Amen. You lay the foundation. Make it rock solid. I like the way Proverbs puts it. Proverbs 18.10 gives us a hint. This is all the wisdom of Solomon. He says this, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. I know Assistant Pastor Cliff loves that verse. It's one of his favorites. Amen. And what is it trying to say? It's saying that if you're building the foundation in the name of the Lord, anything you do in the name of the Lord will succeed. That's the true foundation. The foundation that you should have while building your tower, while improving your life, by setting up your tower, you should have the name of the Lord in everything. You want a good family? Place the name of the Lord at the base of that family. You want a good church family? Then do everything in the name of the Lord. Amen. Intentions, sacrifices, foundations. Guaranteed, you'll have an incredible tower construction. Let's get your takeaway point. Here it is. In order to see the blessings of God, add godly plans to your good intentions. Amen. That tower will enable you to see the blessings of God. But first, you've got to add godly plans to your good intentions. Why is that? Bottom line is this, and this is why it's so important. You live in what you build. Amen, saints. Better yet, how's about your family and all the invitees? You're going to influence people. Not only do you live in what you build, you cause other people to live with it. What's your life like? What kind of tower are you building? Are people going to look at the tower you're building and say, wow, look what the Lord has done through that person. Remember, you live in what you build. My friends, do you need the peace of God, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the salvation of God through Christ Jesus? I challenge you to humble yourself before him now in the privacy of your home and talk to him. Ask him for forgiveness of your sins and invite him to be in charge of your life through the Lord Jesus. Trust him because he sees, he hears, and he'll respond to your honest prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you once again. We are some castle building people. We are some tower building people. We are your kingdom builders. Speak wisdom in our hearts, Lord God. Let your Holy Spirit influence us so that our foundations are in your name. Go with us this week, Lord, causing us to be a blessing and a great influence upon people with the towers that we build. Help us, Lord God, to continue to rejoice in your name. Protect us on both sides, Lord, on every side. From things seen and unseen, go with us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Remember, John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed.